Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Passing Money. This is Kirby. That's Alex over there. Uh, today, we're going to talk about things that people do to keep them poor or broke or however you want to call it. But I think broke is a, a current state. Um, poor is a mindset. So we're going to talk about both of them. But these are things that people do to keep them in that situation. Uh, with all that being said, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. If you like the content, share the content with somebody. Maybe this will help somebody else realize the faults and fallacies in their ways and come to the channel and learn ways to turn their financial situation around. But with all that being said, uh, Alex, what are your uh, things that you have on a list of things that people do to keep them poor or broke? So it's kind of like a mix of both with this topic because there's things that people do as far as like, uh, say, lack of action or having the wrong mentality that can keep them broke. Um, so it's them personally. And then also like uh, things that people are buying, and, you know, what's in their monthly budget that's keeping them held back from succeeding financially or having extra money to invest with or put aside. Um, mm -hmm. Starting with like some of the things that people buy uh, that I that I see, um, I'd say the biggest thing is like uh, cars. I see a lot of people when they talk about cars they just talk about like they're literally making like hundreds of thousands of dollars a year uh, a year like with the cars that they want to get and though i've heard of people spending 700 to 12 14 1500 dollars a month uh in a car that they can't afford um and on top of the car you know they have an outrageous interest rate so the car is barely even being paid off and then on top of that also people when they get the car, when they're so infatuated with that car, you end up hearing them talk about buying car accessories. So then they want to get like new wheels. They want to get like different in, you know, interior accessories, like designing, like with lights and stuff. And it's like all this stuff just adds up and they're like so focused on this car that's just depreciating and taking money away from them. Um, on, on the point of the car, sorry to cut you off. On the point of the car, this is, this is the part that makes me laugh. So they have all the bells and whistles on the car. They pay in the, you know, high car payment. And one reason why is to, you know, they may got a raise at work or something like that. And they feel that they got to have this to, you know, fit the model of what their position holds. But the part that's funny to me is you see them getting a small accident or something like that. Then they don't have any money left over to pay that $500,000 deductible to get the car fixed. So now they have the accessories and the car still has dents and scratches in it. That's just amazing to me yeah. how people do that and they don't realize the fault in their ways. Yeah. Once you crash, it's like, that, and that's how I see it too. I think it's funny. Like you put all this money into a car and then like, it's so it's at a risk every day you're on the road. You know, you can, every, all the money you put into it could just get wiped away. Even if you have insurance, you know, if, if, sure. you, even if you have insurance to insure the car for what you paid, and you can't afford the deductible. Now you just wasted all your time shopping, installing all the all the parts and everything. It's like you designed this car to just like you know eventually just got destroyed. Now it was either a waste of your money or a waste of your time. So I don't know. That's how I look at it. I know car fanatics are gonna hate me. The car fanatics will agree with you. If you can't afford it, then you shouldn't be buying it. So <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, because the car fanatics, because the car fanatics, when they drive around, they see people they got all this crap on their car, but then they see the people that can't maintain it and People forgot more about cars than I know, but when they see it, they always call it out like, man, this dude mufflers, he got a good muffler, but you see his wheel axle is all shaky yeah. and all that. I hear it all the time and I'm like, well, I wouldn't know. I just say yeah. it's a loud car that got a lot of expensive stuff on there. So the car fanatics, I think they'll agree with you. If you can't afford to maintain it, then you shouldn't have it on the road because you're making everybody look bad. Yeah. I think another thing uh, people spend their money on, this is for both women and men, is uh, jewelry. Um, I know I see, you know, say just at work or whatever, I'll see women uh, that have like loads of like, you know, whether it be diamonds or gold or silver. And it's not cheap either because when you pay, let's say you pay, you know, you're buying gold or silver as like, uh, alternate form of investing you're paying spot price plus a little bit of premium but when you buy jewelry where it's been 
you know, mixed in with like say copper and you're not even buying the full, the full metal itself. Purity. Yeah. Right. The, the full purity. Then they're on top of that, there's like even a higher premium because they've converted it into jewelry. So you're paying a higher premium on this jewelry. It's not an investment. Like I I've heard people tell me, Oh, but this is an investment. Like, cause they have gold and stuff. And it's like, you know, the premium you probably paid is probably 30, 40% above what the spot price for that gold would be, you know, like you're paying way above it. And, um, you know, these, uh, uh, some of the people that I meet, like they can't even afford, they can barely afford their bills and they're buying gold and jewelry and stuff like that. And watches too. I see like a lot of guys collect watches that, uh, like, I've, I mean, I, I don't know too much about watches. I've heard some appreciate in value, but those are the ones that like billionaires are buying, you know, like not the, 200 300 watches that you know drop 70 percent in a year right oh on the uh gold front see i you know i had a list but everything that you're saying i could just put mix my list in with you so i'm gonna cut you off a couple times but um yeah on the gold on the gold front when when they when they come back to you let's say you at work or something and they be like oh it's an investment they just trying to sound smart they don't even know how to sell it to even make it an investment <laughs> yeah. That's that's one that's that's one part there. And the thing is, is the part that kills me about corporate America and people there, for the most part, everybody knows for the most part what everybody's getting paid. So if you're buying all the jury to quote unquote flex on your coworkers, you're not they're not they don't think that oh well some naive ones might be like, oh he got money. No, he don't have money. He just chose to forfeit the other obligations in his life to impress people yeah. that don't know no better. And the mindset behind that is amazing because, I mean, me also, I've, I've seen people, they pull up in the Audis and they pull up in the Corvettes. And, and you know, me, I'm doing quick math in my head. Like, how the heck is they affording that when they only make X? Right. So if they're affording this or they're paying the payments for this, then it's a lot of things that they're they're spread very thin or there's a lot of things that they're not taking care of as a whole. But just the mindset behind that is just amazing that people think that they they're investing. And then the other thing is people. I mean, you got the Kevin O'Leary's, the, uh, the Grant Cardone's, the Andrew Tate's out there that are buying the ultra luxury watches that, you know, increase in value. So now these people think that they can go buy the latest Timex from Walmart or whatever, you know, they're not putting no real money into the watches. And they think that, oh, I'm going to hold it and it's going to appreciate over time. First off, you don't even know, you don't even go to a, rep a reputable dealer to buy the asset. Right. You probably online clicking on a website saying, hey, you know, it could be aftermarket, remanufactured, a fake. You don't know. So right. you don't even know where to go buy an authorized piece at, let alone go sell it. So when they say this appreciation stuff and they know it's an investment, it's a joke. It just sounds good for TV, but and the truth is, it's just a piece of trash that's going to get thrown away uh, and when they can't afford to pay for the battery or whatever, and <laughs> it's going to be a paperweight in the house. That's the truth. And they spent all that money when they can be you know, pivoting and doing something else with that money. Yeah. Some of the, like you said, the ultra luxury watches, I mean, those are in the millions or hundreds of thousands and they're like, you know, five ever made, you know, extreme limited edition. Like these, the, like you said, the Timexes or like Invicta is one, not to, not to crap on name brands, but you know, a lot, it, the watches that you're buying in the hundred dollar ranges, they're going to drop in value. Um, another thing I see is people buying like uh, phones and um, with phones, it's, it's not just the phone, but all the subscription plans that come with the phone, the iPhone forever, the, you know, I don't know, international calling because they think that they're going to go on vacation. They never do. Uh, you know, just like all these different subscriptions that you pay on a phone. I hear people having like two phone lines paying like $200 a month. That's insane. Um, I know the phone plan I have, uh, there's five lines and we pay 200 a month. I mean, it's it's so to pay two hundred for two is crazy. Um, and same with me, I got five lines, four or five lines, and it's about two hundred dollars a month. And the crazy part, they pay all this money for data plans, but 
if they just took a second to think about it, mostly everywhere you go has Wi-Fi. So unless you just the outdoorsy type that's always, you know, out in the forest, then you might need some extra data. But most places you go, you know, the McDonald's, your house, your job, everywhere you go has Wi-Fi. So you don't have to spend all that data. But I guess if you want to be a baller and too lazy to click the Wi-Fi button on your phone and you just want to spend your data, then go ahead. But those are the things that make people broke. Yeah. And I have people that I have friends and family that have high high plans that can't afford them, high phone plans that can't afford them. And then they laugh at me because my phone plan is so cheap. Like, you got that? I'm like, yeah. And that's the thing is you should think the inverse. Yeah. He can't he can afford the high price plans yeah. and he won't buy them. But I can't afford them and I keep buying them. So which one of us is wrong? No, and the funny thing to me is like I I've had people that are behind on their like bills tell me, oh, you need a new phone. Like right. I, I need one. Like it's not a necessity. My my iPhone is uh, I think I have the same one as you. I don't know, the iPhone XR. It's like four or five years old or something. But it still works, you know, it's like it still functions. Yeah. I think it's like, you know, when it start when the battery starts draining crazy, then yeah, I'll get another one. But I don't know. It's yeah. Um, I mean that's kind of that kind of ties into my other one where I said uh, subscriptions. Um, but not just phone subscriptions, but um, we mentioned this in another video where every where a lot of people have uh Amazon, Disney, HBO, Netflix cable uh you know stars like all, all these different subscriptions uh theme park subscriptions um and it just adds up hundreds of dollars a month uh that would be and, a and the, the, see people spend money on yeah that's that's another one that's funny like people cut cords and like oh man cable is too high you know i'm, I'm tired of paying 100 200 dollars for cable but then they get every subscription service, and then if you add it all up, it's the same yeah. price for cable. All of them. So what? Yeah. So what was you doing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. One. Okay, so this one, I'm kind of, I'm jumping over one on my list, but uh, dumb vacations is how I titled it, and it's because me and my wife, we go on a lot of trips, but we know how to like really budget it to where it's like. It costs just about the same as if we're going to like St. Augustine, right? Or if we're going to Orlando, like we we know how to make it work. And a lot of people think like just because you go on a trip, you got to spend thousands of dollars and it doesn't have to be that way at all. And um, out here, like a lot of people take like I've heard people spend up to five thousand dollars at Disney and I cannot fathom that like it it hurts to hear that for me like it, I, I can't imagine like for anyone watching like disney is not worth five thousand dollars it's just it's just not worth the experience it's not a five thousand dollar experience um but i'll hear people you know go especially close they're not even going out of the country and they're just spending thousands of dollars like for that much money you can take a, a much better trip um that's more worthwhile. I don't know if you right. and, seen that. Yeah, and and I agree. With, I agree with you a lot. And the people that don't travel, and Alice, you know the story about me and my wife. We traveled everywhere and anywhere most of our lives. So it was funny when you know COVID came on, and then and then the news media started talking about people are doing staycations, like you know, yeah. oh, they're staying local. I've been doing staycations my whole life. You know, what I mean? yeah, <laughs> that. That's what that's what we do, and they act like it was phenomenal. Like, and I'm thinking, like, most people don't have the money, they should have been doing staycations right. before COVID even started. But that's, I mean, but we've, we've traveled a lot and seen a lot of things. But to your point, most people that don't have to, you know, deal with bookings and you know, flying internationally and flying all over the you know, country and things like that, they don't know the avenues and approaches to go about doing it. So when they go on vacation. They're, they have that mindset, like, this might be the only vacation I ever take, so I have to go all out. Yeah. When, when if you, so in your $5,000 uh, vacation scenario, they could have spent maybe, let's just trim it down, they could have spent $1,000 total to get there and the room and board. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, for the hotel, I said woman board. I was thinking military for a second. For uh, <laughs> for a hotel, and then they have so much more money to actually enjoy it. I've seen people spend all their money to pay for the ticket and the hotel that they've shown up, and they couldn't do nothing because they didn't have any money to spend. Yeah. And this is so. This is one thing I see a lot too. Is like for uh, those that like to go on vacation to, or like want to have the dream of going on vacation to, like um say the the smoky mountains like my wife and i will typically go to like that area like in winter like every year so but like my wife says if you're going on vacation if we're going on vacation are we going to stay in the hotel or are we going to be out because it's a new place and we're looking around and stuff and it's true because a lot of people when they go to like the smoky mountains area they want to get a cabin where you know it looks like it's 250 a, a, a night but then you have to add in the property taxes they charge you the sales tax the hotel tax the cleaning fee it comes out to like 700 a night like so you're paying all this money for a cabin and then you still want to go out and do stuff but you just go back to the cabin just to sleep so you could get mm -hmm. a 50 60 dollar hotel that's clean and just go there sleep take a shower and go back out like you don't need a place that's going to cost you hundreds of dollars because it's luxury. Like just have a place that's clean enough and comfortable to sleep. Absolutely. I agree with you 110%. Uh, and it's, and it's amazing. They, they think about the hotel where they're staying at, like that's where they're going to spend most of their time. Most yeah. of the time you're going to be spent enjoying the scenery, enjoying the events, enjoying the culture of where you're going, not the hotel. But most people spend most of their money on <laughs> where they're staying at. And, yeah. and then when they go out, and then their hands always in. I mean, it's always stuff that they want to buy. But since they spent all their money in the hotel, their hands is in their pocket just with the wish method. Oh, I wish I could pay for it. Yeah. Then why go on a vacation if you can't enjoy it? Yeah. So I, another one start with that is like I hear people say like they want to fly in when it's like you could you could just drive there like. You're gonna play. You're gonna pay for a flight ticket that's gonna cost you two, three hundred dollars when you could pay eighty, a hundred bucks in gas just to just to drive there. But. And and I agree with you. Like me, me and my family, we in a different situation now. I mean, for the most part, part I I mean I not for the most part. I hate driving. I hate driving with a passion. <laughs> uh, so if I could fly, if I could fly to the corner store, I would do. It. That's how much <laughs> I could drive. But I won't. I won't spend. But if it's not cost effective, like you know the. Uh, the properties that I just acquired up north. I could fly up north, but I still got to drive two hours to get to it. So I just said, no, I'm just going to drive to get to them because it it don't make sense at all. Uh, but I'm not, I mean, I just, my, that's just my hate for driving, but I'm not, if it, if it don't make financial sense to, to fly, I'm not doing it just because, oh, I got it. But the thing is, is people that don't have it, they don't even think of the financial sense to make not to do it at all. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that point. Yeah, those are my biggest points. I mean, there was an, I had a couple jotted down, like, people overpaying for, like, house accessories, like solar roofs, uh, water softeners that the salesmen sell you for, like, 15 grand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nails and hair, things like that. Just unnecessary expenses, really. And for me, for me, mine is keeping up with the joke, is trying to impress the people that's around you. The crazy thing is the same people you try to impress, if times get hard, you couldn't even call them to help bail you out. For one reason, the people you try to impress is already broke, so they don't have the funds. But the second part is, is you have so many pride, you have so much pride, you've been flexing on them the whole time. You, of course, even if you're broke and about to be set out on the street. You won't admit to these people that you don't have it. Right. So keeping up with the Joneses is one. Of course, they don't have a budget. People, most people don't even know where their money's going. And then it's funny. Uh, and, you know, uh, we talk to a lot of people about finance. And then they'll give you a spitball range of where they think their money's going. And then when you tell them to sit down and actually put it, pen and paper on where their money is going, they realize that they're spending way more money that they're bringing in. Yeah, and then so that that is a major that's a major factor there that keeps people broke. Um, 
And I'm not trying to um, bash men or women that receive child support payments. Uh, that's that's another one that I see that that kills people is they take the child support payments and then they add it to their budget like that will be income for life. And then they base their lifestyle off the child support payments that come in. But the problem with that is if the person that's paying the child support, man or female that's paying the child support, if they lose the job, the money stops. But if you didn't set your budget accounting for that child support money and then that money stops, that means you're underwater on your bills because most people bring their income, their outgo up to their income. That's another thing that I see a lot of people do. And then you sit there and and then you're upset. And then I remember having a conversation with somebody. Uh, they've been receiving child support payments for 15, 16 years. And then one of their kids became of age where child support was not there. And then they said that, oh, I, I don't have no money. I don't know where the money went. And I said, what, did you factor in child support? And then they were like, yeah, the child support payment stopped. You didn't know that your kid was turning 18? And then and then they had two kids. So the next one was um, the father lost his, the father, I think of the father, the father, yeah. The father or, or, or the baby daddy or whatever they call these people these days. Um, <laughs> He lost his job. You know, it happens. So that was the, you know, the paycheck wasn't coming in. So now they're extremely underwater because they set their lifestyle up based off of the income from child support. But it's not an infinite number that will keep going until the end of time. So if you are a person that's receiving child support, stop counting in your budget. That's extra money. The budget is the money that you bring in. The child support money is extra. If you set your budget based off of what you bring in and then the child support is just extra, then you will never be underwater if the child support temporarily stops or your kid turned 18 and is halted altogether. And going back to my first point uh, in the video where I said, um, you know, aside from just what's in your monthly budget that could be holding you back, but you could be holding your back or you are the one holding yourself back uh, is what I would amplify. Um, you know, that's my biggest point that I would, that would be my last point is it's up to you. You like for, for someone that wants to be successful financially, they are the only one that will hold themselves back from becoming that. Um, and I mean, like you, like we've talked about with, with what you did, like you're, a, and I tell people all the time, like in a, your story, like you're a living example where you know, you didn't grow up in, in uh, a rich family. You went to the military and you literally started studying the stock market and investing while at war. I mean, that shows dedication. And then for someone that doesn't do it themselves, all I can say from like from my standpoint to give advice is if you're someone who's a mentee or learning from someone else, just shut up and listen to the person because the only other way that you're going to get it is just doing it the way you did it. So if you have someone that can coach you on it, just shut up, listen to what they're doing and follow that, you know, follow that footsteps because they're leaving the blueprint right there. But uh, many people think yeah. that there's like no opportunities in America. But if you live in America, you have all the opportunity in the world. It's just you may not have the same advantages, but you, you would be the only one holding yourself back from becoming financially successful. And then to your point is when somebody's trying to give you advice, and I'm not saying take advice from everybody, but if you take an advice from somebody that you know done it, you could take the route that I did. And of course, the route that I took was longer because I didn't have somebody to ask and talk to. So I had to go with the ups and downs and, and accumulating all the mistakes. But if you listen to somebody that's already did it, they're giving you the shortcuts. So you don't even have to go through all of the pain that they had to go through. They're giving you all the shortcuts that they took. Well, that you could take that they couldn't take because they learned after they made the mistake. So it's helping you avoid a lot of the pitfalls and mistakes that go on along with this journey. So Alex, to your point, that's right. Shut up and listen. Yeah, that, that that's that's what I got. So all right. With all that being said, sorry, I'm over here coughing. Uh, if you like, dislike, 
don't matter. Just press the like button. It don't <laughs> matter. Just keep pressing the like button. If you like what you heard or didn't like what we heard, what you heard, comment below. We like all all comments, good, bad, and different. If you have any questions, we will reply to them. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Uh, we're trying to push that journey to get to 1,000 subscribers. Um, but with all that being said, I hope this information was uh, inf uh, informative to you and it helped you along in your journey. Yeah, have a good one. See you in the next video. See you guys.